Welcome to Assessment of the Resident with a Suspected Urinary Tract Infection. This video contains two cases you might encounter in a long-term care facility. Based on the cases, you will be asked to make a decision about your residence using your previous knowledge and information introduced in this video. At the end of the video, you will be able to explain the terms urinary tract infection and asymptomatic bacteriuria. You will also be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of a suspected UTI that should be reported and discussed by the healthcare team. Finally, you also will be able to list the reasons for sending urine tests. The goal of the video is to help you make better decisions about antibiotic prescriptions and improve the care of your residents. Let's get started. One of your colleagues is reviewing the case of a resident who is about to be transferred to your long-term care facility from the hospital. He asks you about the urinalysis and culture results he found in her chart. Your colleague looks at these laboratory results and thinks the resident has a UTI. Take a moment to look at these results. Feel free to pause the video using the controls at the bottom of the screen if you need more time. Your colleague thinks the resident has a UTI. Do you think she has a UTI? Let's explore all of the answers. Choose yes, no, or don't know. If you choose yes, you are incorrect. We can't use laboratory results to know whether or not the resident has an infection. We need to talk with her and assess her for symptoms. If you choose no, you're also incorrect for the same reason. If you choose don't know, great job! We cannot know if the resident has a UTI without assessing her. Let's review signs and symptoms of a UTI. People who have dysuria or a burning pain with urination are showing a symptom of a possible urinary tract infection. A resident might also have a UTI if they have systemic signs such as fevers or chills and one or more symptoms that localize to the genital urinary tract. These are urinary frequency, urgency, bladder pain, pelvic pain, hematuria, and urinary incontinence. Many older adults have urinary frequency or incontinence at baseline. Systemic signs and an increase in frequency or incontinence might also indicate a UTI. Notice what's missing from this list. Laboratory tests. Laboratory tests so alone do not tell us if someone has a urinary tract infection. Instead, we use clinical signs and symptoms to decide if we are worried about the possibility of a urinary tract infection. The results of laboratory tests might help guide treatment decisions to make us think about reasons for symptoms other than a urinary tract infection. If a resident has a positive urinalysis or a positive culture but does not have any symptoms suggestive of infection, they have asymptomatic bacteriuria. In this case, you talk with the resident and find out if she does not have any urinary symptoms. So, she does not have a UTI. She does have asymptomatic bacteriuria. A positive urinalysis or positive urine culture in the absence of symptoms is asymptomatic bacteriuria. Asymptomatic bacteriuria is common among older adults. It does not lead to increased risk of infection or death. It should not be treated because the bacteria almost always comes back and often becomes resistant to antibiotics. Let's look more deeply into case one's situation. When the resident arrives to the floor, you and your colleague go see her. She appears fatigued, but is in good spirits and is asking if they are serving key lime pie for dessert tonight. Her vitals are as follows, temperature 99.2 degrees Fahrenheit, heart rate 85, blood pressure 110 over 72, and respiratory rate 16. Review the resident's case information located on the right side of the screen. Based on this information, what would you do next? Would you ask about urinary urgency, frequency, dysuria, chills, and pelvic or bladder pain? If so, that's a great choice because these are all signs and symptoms that suggest a UTI. Would you determine if she has an indwelling urinary catheter? Also a good choice. If she does, try to find out why she has one and, if it's chronic, when it was changed last. Would you ask her about signs and symptoms of infection other than a UTI? Good choice. 
That temperature of 99.2 degrees Fahrenheit may be a normal variation, an early sign of systemic illness, or an error. Would you contact the provider with her vitals and symptoms in your assessment? As you might have guessed, this is also a good choice. Be sure to mention that you asked about signs and symptoms that could suggest a UTI. All of the options listed on the screen are important and could be excellent next steps. Upon assessing the resident, you note that she has no urinary catheter and feels well. She does not have dysuria, urgency, hematuria, or new or increased frequency and incontinence. She also does not have suprapubic or back pain. You communicate these findings to the medical provider and develop a plan to observe the resident overnight and alert the daytime staff and providers of her low-grade temperature elevation. When you see the patient the following evening, she is feeling well. Her temperature is 98.1 degrees Fahrenheit and she is happy that she was not exposed to any unnecessary antibiotics. The lesson learned here is to treat the patient, not their lab values. Let's move on to a second case. A resident's daughter is visiting him in the long-term care facility. The resident has a chronic indwelling urinary catheter due to urinary retention. His daughter says his urine is cloudy and she thinks it has an odor to it. She asks you to check his urine for infection. The resident himself is not available. You find him in the common area singing an enthusiastic rendition of Yellow Submarine for karaoke hour. Review the resident's case information on the screen. The resident has a chronic indwelling urinary catheter. His daughter says his urine is cloudy. The resident is actively participating in karaoke. Based on the information you just saw and heard, what would you tell the resident's daughter? If you choose, he probably has a UTI because the urine is cloudy or he probably has a UTI because his urine smells bad, you are incorrect. Foul smelling or cloudy urine is not an indication to send a urine culture. If you choose, he seems to be feeling well, let's ask him about symptoms when he's done singing, you are correct. All residents with a chronic indwelling urinary catheter will develop asymptomatic bacteriuria. It was a good thing that you didn't just diagnose the resident with a UTI based on his urine. The lesson learned from case two is that cloudy or smelly urine is not an indication to send a urine culture you must determine if the resident has symptoms before moving forward with a possible diagnosis. Urine in the drainage bag becomes a good place for bacteria to grow. Bacterial growth can lead to cloudy urine. Cultures taken from the drainage bag or from the proximal port of the catheter do not necessarily reflect what is happening in the bladder. For residents who do have cloudy or dark urine, you should consider an increase in oral fluids. Offer four to eight ounces every one to two hours. On the screen, you see when you should send a urine culture. You also see when you should not send a urine culture. You should send a urine culture when a resident has dysuria, flank pain or suprapubic tenderness, and a fever, urgency, hematuria, and a fever, or new or increased frequency or urinary incontinence and fever. Do not send a resident's urine culture if the urine is foul smelling or cloudy after a urethral catheter change, routinely upon admission, after treatment to document care or for test of cure, or for a change in a mental status in non-catheterized residents. In residents with urinary catheters, if they have an acute change in mental status, you may consider sending a urine culture. These individuals also should be thoroughly evaluated for other possible reasons for a change in mental status, pain, dehydration, a change in medications, or even constipation are all reasons older adults may have a change in mental status. Based on the two cases you saw in this e-learning video, you have five take home messages. They are that if you are worried about a urinalysis or urine culture result, go see the resident and determine if they have symptoms. If the resident is asymptomatic, a positive urine culture might indicate asymptomatic bacteriuria rather than infection. Treating a resident for asymptomatic bacteriuria can lead to harmful side effects. Urinalysis and urine cultures should only be sent if the resident is symptomatic, not if urine appears cloudy, dark, or smelly. Most importantly, we treat people, not their laboratory results. This video has ended. 
but feel free to rewatch or rewind to any point. You should now be able to explain the terms urinary tract infection and asymptomatic bacteriuria. You should also be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of a suspected UTI that should be reported to and discussed by the healthcare team. You should also be able to list the reasons for sending urine tests. This will ultimately help you make better decisions about antibiotic prescriptions and will improve care for your residents. The findings and recommendations in this module are those of the authors who are responsible for its content and do not necessarily represent the views of AHRQ. No statement in this report should be construed as an official position of AHRQ or of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Any practice described in this module must be applied by healthcare practitioners in accordance with professional judgment and standards of care in regard to the unique circumstances that may apply in each situation they encounter. Use of brand, manufacturer, or vendor name is for identification only and does not imply endorsement by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services.